Hello guys, hello everyone. Hello, 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 hello. Uh, it's Wednesday and we have something to fix. And what do we have? We have this ESA laptop. It's ESA. Let me see. Yeah, it's in pieces like this because this is coming from another repair shop. See, ESA, ESA Aspire 3 model N19. C1 that's the model of this and uh, what they are saying no display and uh, broken inches so initially just to brief up what happened to this laptop this laptop is coming from another computer shop what they did the customer came to their shop with this laptop and the customer clearly explained to them my laptop is turning on if i put light on the screen i can see some writing but there's not light meaning to say the initial problem was the backlight so because people they don't understand how to fix things what they tried they try the tempering with the screen connector trying to change the screen trying to change screen until at a point when the back, when the, the the writing was normal so that's according to the owner and the owner gets you know that anger someone is trying to fix the, your gadget you wasted your time at the end the device is not working something like that so with the anger, the owner took his laptop and he said, let me try another place. And that's how this laptop came. So, the initial problem is no longer here. Now, we have a, a laptop which is coming on, but we, we don't have, we have nothing on the screen. And obviously, the inches are broken. But uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's start by testing the charger. This is the charger. Nineteen point five. You can see on the screen. Our charger is good. The next step. Yeah, it's in pieces, but we we'll try to fix. The next step is to plug in the charger. Try to power on. You can see here. And uh, the screen, there's no backlight here. No backlight, the screen is just dead. All what I've seen, just a flip, and that's all. Yeah, the battery is dead. The owner told me that the battery is dead. Let's try one more time. On. You have seen that flip? Just a slight change on the screen, but we have nothing, we have no writing, we have nothing. The LED is on here for the power on. Yeah, these are the screws. So what do we what do we know? The ribbon cable is not properly connected. Let's unplug this cable. Let's plug back the cable. Let's try to power on the laptop. On. Still have nothing on the screen. Okay. 
but uh, we have a flashing like a small flash it means when I press the power on button the EC chip startup chip is reading all the power supplies and uh, is turning on the motherboard but because something is wrong related to display we can't get any picture on the screen so you can see all these inches they are broken but in order for us to fix these inches the first important thing is to hunt for the picture was it's pointless to start fixing the inches if the if we are not going to have a picture on the screen maybe they they they, they tempered with the screen connector and the, we have like a, a dead graphics here so yeah the owner is very disappointed with what they did these guys is very disappointed because he left the laptop at another repair shop for some days he went back yeah it's a long story you know people when they try to fix things they failed some who are less professional they take advantage that the device is no longer working so he start to exchange parts ram the ram he said they changed this is not my original ram things like that so you know one you have messed up things two you are being dishonest to the customer at the end you are chasing people away from you that's how you lose business in your repair in, especially if you are a technician doing repairs so what can be the issue here it's not the screen connector trust me so what i want to check let's check for voltages screen connector we must have 19 must have two fuse the one for 19 volts and 3.3 where's this first fuse 3.33 the other side of the fuse 3.33 the next step is to try to locate the 19 volts fuse which is here zero zero okay what about on the screen connector do we have 19 volts i'm trying to look for a big power rail for 19 volts three so on all the pins of the screen connector we all have 3.3 so the 19 volts power is shorted it's not it's like it's shorted but the 19 volts which is coming to the screen is absent okay what i want to do yeah obvious there's no screws here no screws at all
So that the, that the other side one second. So let's see now. We are on the we have two valve the back cover, the battery is not connected. And uh, that the hard drive frame. The motherboard looks fine. Except here, maybe you can see next to the screen connector here, there's a burn up component which I don't know. Yeah, here seems to have like a blown up component. Maybe you can see. There's a blown up component there. So what I want to do, let's plug in the charger. Let's power on the laptop. Oh. Laptop on, still nothing on the screen. I can see the LED, the green light. So let's check some voltages on calls. What do we have here? Five volts. Zero point twenty two. One point twenty. Yeah, that's the rain power supply. On the last pin of the BIOS, three point three. The fan is spinning. More coils here. Three point three. Here. Yeah. One volt. One point one one almost one volt again. Yeah, this is the processor. One point ten volts. Okay. Where here next to the screen connector where I've seen something weird. What do you have? We have zero on the other side. The other side is 19 volts. And I can see a big power rail which is going to the plus of the to the plus 19 volts which is going straight to the to the screen. You know how the screen is working. We do have nine, 19 volts for for the backlights, which is boosted after the inverter chip. And we have 3.3 the, the power on signal for 3.3 and 3.3 to adjust brightness. The one is to power on the screen, the one is to adjust the brightness. I think I explained about uh, how this, those signals are working. So on this side, we do have 19. On the other side, we have zero. One point two zero nineteen. So let's come with our own fuse there. 
or we can check if the other side is not shorted to ground this is not ground this is not ground you are safe so I'll come with the bridge here and try to see if we are going to get 19 volts and something on the screen nice fuse using soldering wire so plug in the, ch the charger power on now the flick it's now a little bit more but it still have nothing on the screen that's bad do you have a fault screen? let me check out the room let's feed the room let's check out this connector let's plug back the connector the screen connector let's go on the screen side let's unplug this connector let's put back the connector let's try one more time and let's check to see if we, we now have 19 volts on the screen side that's very important that's very important i want to go exactly on that fuse which i said is for 19 volts check on the screen 19.26 on the other side of the fuse 19.27 yeah the laptop is still on can you see the light so now what's the story you know what You know, people, they are proper rude. The, the owner mentioned something about the room. So probably those guys from another computer shop, they put a, a dead room because I can't see even sticker. He said mine was having a sticker and it was in DDR4 8 gig room and they, they are giving me something. I, I can't trust uh, something like that. So let's try with a different rim. One second. I found another rim. Let's try with this one. Is this the same rim? No, it's not the same. So, what I came with at first was 8 gig DDR3, and we have 8 gig DDR4. So let's try with this room. Let's 
You know, you have failed to fix something. The next thing, you are, you are, you are taking away parts for the customer. It's very bad. Let's power on. On. The screen is displaying white. Do you have a dead screen? Why the screen is displaying white? Why? This is a bad sign. Again. No. Why? I've seen an ASA sign there. What is moving? You can see the ASA sign. So clearly, they changed the RAM. Clearly, they change the RAM. It's very clear. So, let's put back the hard drive, the, the battery. We need to put the back cover. Now, let's try to concentrate on the screen side how can you solve something like this an idea how we can fix something like this yeah these inches they are too tight from the manufacturer so we need to loosen them up and then we try to to fix them. So I've loosened the inches. They are now better. So the next step is to fix the the inches. Let's try to fix the inches and see. Yeah, it's very disappointing. It's very disappointing. We try to fix something, we fail. The next thing. We check out components from customer's device. So what I think was the initial problem <coughs> was the backlight according to, this, to the customer's description based on the fact that the inches were broken probably this connector wasn't pro properly connected. And I don't know what they did to the moment they blow up the the fuse for the 19 volts, which is going to the screen. <laughs> yeah, it happened.
it happen but usually it's not like you are fixing everything but the little knowledge that you have it's always good to be professional It's always good to be professional. <laughs> because that's the only way you gain trust. So, we want to try our level best to to fix this laptop I want to try by all means to fix this because already the customer is bitter from what happened you know that's that is the some of the issues which triggered to the public not having trust on people who fix things being it a motor mechanic a cell phone technician anyone who is doing such kind of you know such kind of uh, services There are a lot of trust issues with the public. Was a lot they are trying to do shortcuts. At the end, the device is not working. With the aim of that. I failed to fix the device. You try to compensate your time by stealing. You can't you can't you can't do it that way. And you have to admit that you can't fix everything. Not all the the, the gadgets which came to your shop are meant to be fixed by you. Some of them is someone's job. Some of them are someone's job. And you have to accept that. You really have to accept that. So let's start fixing the. How are we fixing the inches? What glue or epoxy? What do you think you can use? What glue or epoxy? I think we need to put epoxy and then thereafter we can use hot glue. That uh, just to make sure that we have a strong connection. So I'll use epoxy. 
and uh, after that how can I do it because I want you to see him. I want you to see how we are fixing such kind of problems so I'll fix the lower one So let's play with the epochs. Yeah, that is that the epochs. Let's try to do it. Nothing hard here. Nothing hard. I'll put epochs here. I'll put epochs on the other side and we wait for the glue to to get dry. Let's go to the second stage. So what we did, I put epox here, I put another epox here, and uh, the back bezel is now connected before you have put screen. So that is the first important stage. Especially if you are in a region with high temperatures like Zimbabwe, because this side is very hot. We can't use like a pure hot glue. Of course, I, I do have some glue sticks here, these ones. But uh, I don't want to use pure glue for that reason that we are living on site where temperatures they are very high. So using pure glue might not be a good idea. So I've used epoxy. You know the epox this one recent and the other you mix like a ratio one is to one it's very simple so now what we have to do is to come up with the screen that's our screen Let's come up with the screen. Let's connect our screen. And now we need to make sure that this connector won't jump out. We need to be ma make sure at this point. I think we can use even hot glue. No. Let me use insulation tape just to hold this plastic so that this connector won't jump out. That's fine. The next step is to try to put the screen on the position. Let me miss these steps to make sure that the screen is in the proper position. Just like that. Let's put some screws on the top. Yeah. 
or on the other side. Yeah. Our screen looks to be in proper position. After doing this, we need to make sure that this screen is coming on. So let's power on. on. Yes, sir. Let's unplug. That's all what we want to see. We want to see that the we've properly inserted this uh, screen ribbon cable. Now the next uh, step our next step what is our next step? Now we need to use what glue and come with the top frame. It's very easy. It's very easy. I have this glue gun. So I'm I'm doing the lower parts. Let's come with the top frame quickly. Yeah, now we are concentrating only on one side. Only on one side. Some pegs. Like this, I'll put some pegs here. You need to focus on the other side. It's very simple, nothing hard here. I'm putting more glue on the other side. On the other side, let's put the frame again. Very simple. Let's put some pegs. Like the other side. Let's put some pegs here. And uh, yeah, so I've put glue on all sides and put the top cover. So let's wait for the glue to dry up and then we can test. Let's see now. Uh, I only took like five minutes to let the dry the 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 the, the glue dry up. Now The top cover is, is in place. You 
you see how flexible it is now you you can't do anything you can't break this inches so at this point I'm 100% sure even if I give the customer this laptop uh, we won't face any problems of like broken inches anytime soon why because i've taken into consideration why these hinges break up in the first place because they were too tightened from the manufacturing so all you need to do is to loosen up before you apply either epox or hot glue so that all the pressure of closing up and the opening up the laptop you want you want the customer want to put too much pressure so all that is left is to test yeah the charging light is here um, yes, log preparing windows preparing automatic repair probably uh, we've done a lot of unexpected windows shut down so it's very common but let's just wait to confirm that so we have solved the the problem from another repair shop which is a good thing the mouse is touchpad is working advanced exit exit and continue to windows 10 i'm curious to see if the windows is still in good shape after that i'll put all the screws to we'll do the cleaning process but the most important part is our laptop is now working so what they did they were putting screens taking out probably while it is plugged on power and they blow up the 19 volts fuse which is going to the screen yeah it's loading windows loading windows there's username there when there's no password what about keyboard the keyboard looks responding so everything is working fine here so what i'll do i'll stop this video i'll put all the screws i'll clean everything and uh, the job is done so that's how you fix inches and that's how you can diagonize a problem you you see the problem at first there was no nothing on the screen but uh, a slight flashing meaning to say the board has passed the test but something is not right i checked some voltages the 19 volts is missing which is going to the screen i seen that there's blown up fuse for some reasons because it's coming from another computer shop we fixed the the, the fuse and uh, 
still there was nothing. Why? Because yeah, some people they are cowards, they change this room. Because the customer said initially this laptop was working with a four gig RAM and it is some kind of uh, these young boys who love gaming and they go and buy an eight gig RAM with a sticker. And if you see this room, there's no sticker. So it's possible that what they did to the first shop, they tried to fix the third because of their failure. Uh, they tried to compensate their time by exchanging working parts with non-working parts, which is a very bad habit. So, I'll stop this video now. Like, subscribe, don't forget to turn on the notification bell. See you on the next replay. Bye.